rest of them are, are always there. What I mean by the technical skills is using the language of the web, creating HTML pages, and that's what we're going to talk about today. Usually the first few discussions uh, are slanted more heavily to the, the technical side because we want to get that going uh, and, and get you understanding the basics of creating a web page and what you need to do to create it uh, and so on. So that's using the languages of the web. In other words, how do I create a web page? How do I put an image on a web page? How do I make a link on a web page? You obviously need how to do, know how to do that, right? Or nothing that you try is going to work, you know? So that needs to work. The other aspect of it is what should I put on my web page? How should it be organized on my web page? How should it look on my web page? All right? Those are important as well. And if either one of them aren't adequate, then the web project won't be successful. Oftentimes, when a web project doesn't succeed, it isn't because the technical side uh, is wrong. It's because it's not designed very well. It hasn't been thought out very well and, and designed very well. All right. Um, the typical complaint that you hear from people, if you, if you ask them to identify a site that they use that they don't like, the typical compla complaint that you hear is, I can't find the stuff that I'm looking for. All right. That's not really a technical issue. You know, they're not complaining that the links don't work or that the images don't work or, or anything like that. They're complaining that, yeah, I can see the page, all right, and I can click around it, but I have no idea how to get to where I want to go. And that's really a design issue. And design for websites really means a lot more than just like what colors we're going to make it. That's an aspect of design. But that's kind of the, just the surface of, of web design. You know, that's like talking about automobile design and talking about the kind of paint that's on it. All right? Yeah, that's an aspect of it. That's important, you know. Um, or what the upholstery is like, you know. But there's probably more meaningful things about the design of a car. You know, the gas mileage you get, um, you know, how safe it is, and so on. That, that's really the, the, the important stuff of automobile design. And that other stuff, yeah, it's important, and, and it can do a lot to make you like your car, but again, it, it takes a back seat if you pardon the pun. All right? How do you design a successful website? Well, we'll spend a lot of time about that. We won't really talk about that much today, but the one word that I want to say is planning. You know, good websites don't happen accidentally. It, it's like any other big endeavor that you have. You know, um, if you are building a house, you don't, you don't go into a, a, an empty field with some wood and a hammer and nails and start banging it together, right? You, you, you plan it out, all right? Uh, if you're writing a term paper, you don't sit down the night that it's due and just start typing. You shouldn't do that, <laughs> all right? Let's put it that way, all right? Um, you should, you, should, you should outline it, and you should plan it, and you should think through what you're going to say and, and gather your materials and all that. And in that way, you'll have, you'll have a better work than if you just shoot from the hip. And it's, it's no different in, in web development. All right. Um, what I'd like to do is, is, first of all, briefly talk about what happens when you ask for a web page. All right? In other words, if I go in here onto the computer and I type in, in my web browser, a web browser is simply a program that allows you to view web pages. If I type in something, um, ESPN.com, what happened right there? <laughs> All right, what was you know what's the mechanics of what happened? And I'd like to introduce that. And again, some of these themes we're introducing, and we'll come back to later throughout the semester. Essentially what happened is this, and I'll draw this diagram. I draw it in, in almost all my classes, dozens of times probably. What happens is this. I am sitting at my computer, and I have running a web browser. A browser is simply a program that allows you to view web pages. And there's a bunch of different browsers, right? There's Internet Explorer, Firefox, Google Chrome, 
safari, and more than that. This we will call the client. The client is the person that is requesting the web pages. It's asking for a web page. How do you ask for a web page? Well, you type in the address in the bar. That's one way of asking. You click on a link. That's another way of asking. Um, you pull up a bookmark that you've made uh, previously. That's another way of asking. So all those ways are, are, are just different methods of making a request. Your request then goes through the internet. which is represented by a cloud in this example, uh, in this diagram, because what happens in there is magic and no one really understands it. No, that's not true. <laughs> All right. Someone understands it. Uh, but that's not really the purpose of this class. We simply take it on faith that you type in the address. Somehow, the internet makes it so the, the, your request goes to the appropriate web server. A web server is where the web pages live. So when I typed in ESPN.com, somehow my request, I'm connected to the internet, somehow it traveled through the cloud and made it to ESPN's web server. Then the ESPN web server simply sends back all the files that you need to view the page. And then I view it within my browser. Actually, the code for this actually is now on my machine. And if I come back later, it'll send another copy of the code and so on and so forth. All right? Along with all the images and, and maybe some other files as well. So, the browser is a program that allows us to view the web page. The browser um, understands a few different languages. But the most important language, most fundamental language, and the one that we're going to start off first is the browser understands a language called HTML. Okay? And HTML, the letters stand for Hyper Text, that's an R there, Markup Language. And if we can break this down into two parts, hypertext and markup language, I, I think that is what uh, allows us to get a sense of what's going on here. Hypertext. All right. By hypertext, we mean text that's more than just regular text. All right. You know, any sci-fi fans, hyperspace. Well, somehow it's different than regular space. It's more than regular space. I don't know what it is, but it's more. All right? If someone is hyperactive, it means that they're more active than, than normal. All right? So whenever you see hyper, you know, you think of like beyond or more than. All right? So in the case of this, obviously we have more than just plain text. All right? We have pictures, actually video. We have text that is um, different colors. And we have, of course, links. Right? So this is more than just text. Text would just look like a book. All right? Text, 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 text. All right? That's what makes the web exciting is somehow it's is more than that, right? It's more than just text, 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 text. All right? So how do we take a document, which is our web page that we're going to create in HTML, and make it more than just plain old text? You know, If you go into Notepad, which we'll go into in a few minutes, and start typing in stuff, uh, you're just typing in text. You're just typing in words. Well, how does that somehow end up being more than words? It ends up being more than words because we mark up that text. We mark it up. Now, some of you um, in textbooks in, in school might mark up your textbook, right? You might have a highlighter, and you know, if the if the professor is lecturing and says on page 56, 
on page 56, the second paragraph, yeah, that's really important. All right, what are you going to do? You're going to highlight it, maybe put a star next to it, a check mark, something like that. You'll physically, literally mark up that text to say, hey, this isn't just a regular paragraph. This paragraph is different than all these other paragraphs. This one's important. It's going to be on the test. <laughs> all right, so you mark it up to indicate that, to give it extra meaning. All right, not the same as the other stuff. It's, it, it's special. It's different. Likewise, if I were to say something like, oh, this paragraph here, well, that's kind of obsolete. You know, it was true when it was written, but things have changed since then. All right, what are you going to do? You're going to mark it up, but in a different way. Maybe you'll put a big X through it or whatever. Maybe you use a different color, you know, if, 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 you, really, uh, you know, if you really get into this sort of thing. All right? Uh, the bottom line is you mark it up. You add extra stuff to the text to give it extra meaning. And that's exactly the idea of hypertext. We're going to take a regular text document, and we're going to add markup to it to give it extra meaning. All right, so let's start off here, and let's create a, a simple web page and put some markup in it. And I'm going to do it simply by opening Notepad, all right? Some people, especially people that have done a little bit of web development, uh, uh, yeah, have asked me, like, why do you use Notepad? Notepad is like the simplest program out there. Right? Um, all it is is a text editor. All you can do is type into it. That's like it. All right? Why don't I use something like Dreamweaver, for example? Uh, Dreamweaver is a program that l helps you to create uh, web pages, you know, or some other tool. The reason that I don't use those is very simple. You know, if you were studying to become a baker, all right, you wouldn't go to the store and buy a box of Duncan Hines and cook up some cupcakes that way. All right? Now you'd learn how to make it from scratch. If you learn how to make it from scratch, then you really know how to bake. If you bake it from a box of Duncan Hines, then you know how to make a box of Duncan Hines. You really don't know how to bake. All right? um, why don't kids use calculators in their first math class? I assume they still don't. I don't know. Back, back when I was in school, we had those little abacuses, you know. Uh, but why don't you use those? You don't use those because if you do that, you don't really learn the math, you know. Once you learn how to use a math, uh, to do math, then yeah, maybe use a tool to help you out. You know, I wouldn't expect a, a physicist. They've already proved that they know addition and multiplication, right? They don't have to prove anything. But it makes your life easier. So after you've learned the nuts and bolts of it, Maybe then you think, well, okay, I'm going to use a tool. Uh, but in, in, in the phase of learning, um, it's important, I think, for us to really get down to the nuts and bolts level and really learn the code inside and out. So I'm going to open up Notepad. Okay. Here we go. Here's Notepad. And I'm going to try to create um, a little page that is going to have, um, let me sketch out what it's going to look like. Um, it's going to look like this. be a page about photography, let's say. All right? So, even though we don't know a lot about web development yet, and we haven't done any HTML, I'm going to imagine in my head a simple design for the page. All right? And then we'll go and we'll create a page that, that looks like this. All right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to have a big heading on the top of the page that says, you know, digital photography 
fade easy. All right. It's a big old headline at the top uh, of the page that, you know, is like, like a banner, all right, that explains, you know, what the purpose of the page is. And it's important to do this uh, from a design perspective. No one should be looking at your web page wondering what it's about, all right? And, and it's funny, I, I say that, and, and <laughs> you know, just like, you know, just like whenever you buy a cup of coffee these days, it says here, careful, the beverage that you're about to enjoy is hot, you know? <laughs> they need to put a warning message on here telling me my coffee's hot. Why do you think that is? Because someone didn't think about that the coffee is hot, and it's like, well, let's see what happens when I spill it on my leg. And they get burned, and they're mad and annoyed and run to the hospital and so on. All right, so why do I say it's important to let people know what your page is about, even though it's obvious? Well, because believe it or not, some people mess that up. There are sites on the web that you can go to and look at and say, what is this about? <laughs> All right, and it can be very confusing. And therefore, you know, what, what do people say? Common sense isn't necessarily all that common, all right? So therefore, I think it's important to say these things because even though, yeah, you may, you may roll your eyes and say, yeah, of course you're going to do that. Well, it's important to note because some people have messed this up, all right? So I'm going to have a big banner on the top of my page that says digital photography made easy. So anyone going at that page instantly knows the purpose of the page. It's not about... Uh, you know, it's not about, you know, showcasing the, the work of a certain photographer, all right? Maybe even if they know it's a photography page, you know, exactly what is it about. Then I'm going to put maybe some subtitles here, or subsections. Selecting a camera. All right? And then maybe I'll have a paragraph here, a, a little introduction about selecting a camera. And then I'm going to have um, maybe some subcategories like point and shoot, camera phone, DSLR, which is a you know the the high end models, digital single lens reflex. So let's say that's the basic structure of my page, and I'm not going to fill in the all the text, but you can imagine there might be a paragraph about each of these topics, you know. A paragraph introduction, a paragraph about point and shoot, a paragraph about the camera phone, and a paragraph about DSL. So that's my design, all right? And again, even on something simple like this, I stopped and thought through basically what do I want it to look like, um, how do I want it organized, and so on, all right? Now, when we, when we have acquired more tools in doing web development, we can start designing fancy stuff, you know, with maybe something on the side and something along the top and something along the bottom and something in the middle and something up there. You know, we can, we can get more involved in our design. But even with a simple project, take a little bit of time, sketch it out, all right? Doesn't have to be elaborate, but it shows that you thought about it. And you've thought, like, how am I going to organize this material? All right. Now, you might notice that kind of what I've done here is done like an outline, right? I mean, this would be a similar thing if I was doing an outline for a paper, let's say. Let's say I was writing in an English class a paper about digital photography. You know, my main topic might be digital photography. My first section might be selecting a camera. That section is divided into subsections. And then maybe I have another section about using the camera controls, and then I have some other things, and so on down the line. All right? But we'll start out with this. So I'm going to go and create my HTML document simply by typing in um, words in here. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to say di digit photography nope I want you to guess what I'm typing no I'm just <laughs> I, uh, I, I always do that I, I almost do that once a class at least um, it, you know my goal is to make one class 
throughout the semester where I never have the wrong thing up there. And, and I'm not, I probably have done it once, I don't know, but who knows. We'll see if, may, maybe next day, next time we'll be lucky. Exactly. Digital photography made easy. All right, and then selecting a camera. And I'm just going to write a little bit for each paragraph because, you know, I don't want to waste our time. You have a bunch of choices when selecting a camera. There is, there is a big difference in price, quality, etc. I'm going to go and turn word wrap around so it wraps around like that. All right. Point shoot. These are the simplest of cameras, blah, blah, blah. Camera phone, believe it or not, some phones have very nice cameras with certain limitations. My camera phone, for example, takes really good pictures, like if there's good light. If it does not good light, forget it. But if there's decent light, it takes decent pictures. Lastly, DSLR. These are the high end. All right, so this is the text, right? This is plain old text. And if you can imagine these paragraphs being expanded to have more content in them so that they're a complete paragraph, this would be the text. But it's not hypertext yet, all right? Why isn't it hypertext? I haven't done anything to tell the web browser, gee, this is my page heading, all right? This is my first main topic. This is a subtopic. This is a subtopic. This is a subtopic. So I have to mark it up to tell it, hey, this is a main heading, this is a secondary heading, and so on down the line. Now, we know with a book you mark it up with a highlighter or a pen or whatever. How do you mark it up in HTML? You mark it up through the use of what are called tags. All right. What are tags? They're little snippets of text that you put before and after something that says, hey, between here and here, I want to treat it like this. All right? So we're going to go over uh, three or four tags in this example just to get us started. And then we'll add some more tags here. Now, if you've done some web development, uh, I'm skipping a few important tags just to, to get to a certain point, and then we'll, we'll run back and add them. All right. Tags look like this. This is an example of a tag. A tag comes in two parts, a start tag and an end tag. So tags are paired up. There's a starting tag and there's an ending tag. The starting tag says, hey, I'm going to start treating the text from here on in in a special way. So, hey, starting with this, I'm treating this special. How am I treating it special? This is a top level heading. And that's what the H1 tag represents. The H1 tag represents this is a top level heading. All right. I then have my text. And just like if you were highlighting in a book, you wouldn't start highlighting and then highlight, you know, highlight the rest of the chapter or the rest of the book. 
you'd stop where that specialness ended. Well, here is where I'm stopping. So everything between the start and end tag gets treated in a special way. So in this case, the words digital photography made easy is an H1 or a top level heading. Think of as H1 is like the top level on your outline. All right. Now, I didn't make up H1. That's the rule of the language. That's how you make a top level heading, H1. All right. All tags look like this. All right. Now, there, there can be some slight variance, but all tags use the less than and greater than sign, and it goes around the name of the tag. The ending tag then looks the same as the start tag, except there's a slash before the name of the tag again. All right. How many different kinds of headers can you get? How many different levels of headers that you can get? You can get six of them. Now, that, now, now know what I said. I didn't say you can have only six headers on a page. I said you can have six different levels of heading. You can have two or three H1s. You could have 10 H2s and so on down the line. But there's no such thing as an H7 tag. If you think about it, it kind of makes sense because if you were making an outline, when would you ever make an outline that indented more than six times? Ooh, if you did that, then your page is too complicated. All right? Then you're trying to put too much on a page if you have more than six levels of stuff in it. You know, your page is too complicated then. All right. So this, if you notice back from our design, this is sort of a subtopic of this. So I will put this in an H2 tag. H2 works the same as an H1. All right. This is just a plain old paragraph, so I will use a P tag to indicate that. Now, these other three headings are underneath selecting a camera. These are sort of subtopics under the topic of selecting a camera. So those are going to be H3 tags, right? H1 is sort of the main idea of the whole site. H2 is sort of the second idea, the main idea of this page. Then each of these are sort of sub-ideas under that. Well done. I was checking to make sure everyone was paying attention. Did anyone buy that? <laughs> These other two things, of course, or other three things are just plain old paragraphs, so I'll put the P tag in those. I had an old teacher back in fourth grade that um, would nod off while like we were working on stuff. And she swore that she was just doing that just to see who would behave even when there wasn't someone watching them. I think even when I was in fourth grade, I didn't believe that. All right. Okay, so we have our stuff. We've now marked up our text. So it's more than plain old text. It's hypertext. All right. We marked up. The top level header with an H1, second level header H2, third level header H3, and we've marked up our paragraphs with the P tag. Now we're ready to save this and view it. Now, again, for those of you that maybe have done some web development, I'm missing some important tags. We'll get to those in a minute, all right? But I just want to show what this is going to look like, and I want to talk about saving a file. So, how do I save this file? 
All right, or up to file, save, or control S. Now, watch this dialogue. I'm going to save it on the desktop. Now, uh, Notepad wants to save files as TXT files. All right, we don't want to save it as a TXT file. We want to save it as an HTML file. So we can't take the default for saving it. All right. So what we're going to do is, and we're not going to say save as type text, we're going to change that to all files, and we're going to type in the full name, and I'll type in photography as the name of the file, dot html, and then I'll click save, and if we look at it, Here's the file. Notice the icon is different. All right. The icon is, a di is the icon for Google Chrome, which is a browser that we're running on this machine. Um, if you're running Internet Explorer, your icon might look like that, like the little E for Internet Explorer. This is different than a text file. If I went in and I saved it as a text file, and I forgot to go and change this thing and just changed it as, saved it as photography. Notice what it looks like. It looks like a little notepad, which means it's just plain old text. All right. Now, one question I get asked uh, almost every semester is people will say, like, what file do you need? Do you need the notepad file or do you need the HTML file? You only have one file, all right? You can view that file two different ways. You can view that file in Notepad, and you can view that file within the web browser, but it's still just the one file. It is like the difference between taking a photograph of someone and taking an x-ray of them, right? It's the same person, it's just two different views of them. One is seeing the internals of, of the person. One is seeing the surface. And so viewing it in the browser is like taking a photograph, it's seeing the surface, seeing what the web page actually looks like when viewed in a browser. In Notepad then, you're, you're viewing sort of the guts of it, the internals of it. Now, how do we view it in the browser? Simply by double clicking it. And if I double click it, I can see my page looks pretty much like my outline. All right. Notice that by default, the H1 is the biggest, right? The H2 is the next biggest. The H3 is the third biggest, which makes sense, right? Uh, you know, the, the size of type typically indicates importance, right? If, if there's a real important news story, it's going to have a big headline. That, that, that's a visual cue to you that, hey, this is really important. So we have the same thing here, all right? The, the top level headers are bigger. And then you go, and then the normal text is just normal text. It's like that you would see. All right. Any questions about this? Now, yes, go ahead. Can you do multiple things in one tag? Um, ah, okay. Good question. The question was, can you do more than one thing in a tag? Can you, for example, make it a header one and center it? All right. Here's the short answer to the question. All right. In web development, there's two main aspects. There's the content of the page, and there's the way the page looks. All right. In other words, the content of this page says, hey, this is the main idea of the page. And the main idea of the page are the words, digital photography made easy. That's the content. Not just the fact that that's the words, digital photography, but the idea, hey, I have this and it's a heading. All right. The appearance of it is exactly how does it look. Is it in black font? Is it in red font? Is it in Times New Roman? Is it in Arial? You know, all those questions about how it looks is how it looks. And part of that would be whether it's centered, centered or right aligned or left aligned or whatever. All right. The content of the page, the meaning of the page is done via HTML. 
the appearance of the page is done via CSS. Okay, so to answer that, to answer your question, your specific question about making a header and centering it, to do it properly, you would put the header in, in HTML because that's the meaning, that's the content, and then you would use CSS to center the, the heading. All right. So I guess sort of to answer your question, um, no, pretty much. You, you, each tag represents one thing. It says this text means this. But then you can add some CSS code to it, which we'll talk about, I'm not sure when, maybe next week. Uh, you can add some CSS code to change the way it looks. Other questions? No, no, it's, I'm just viewing it on my machine. If you look, for example, this up here says file, C, documents, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, it's not, um, probably towards the end of the semester we'll at least touch uh, a bit on publishing your website because what you have to do is, you know, this machine isn't a web server. It's not prepared to, a to, to respond to requests from the outside world. All right, so. To really do what you said, to put it up on the internet, you'd have to have a web server with a name associated with it, www dot something, that's prepared to respond with web pages, and then you'd put it up on that machine. All right? Yes. Oh, just all right. Gotta be careful when you stretch. Yes. How can that see it? I thought you needed the HTML head and body. Well, again, that's that's where I said uh, a second ago I was I was skipping a couple important tags. But I mean, I'm just confused how it can actually tell HTML without those tags. It does. Yeah, it just it it it, it yeah. Um, it read the extension. It, well, the, reading the extension told it to open it up with Google Chrome. All right, Google Chrome when looking at this looks through it and says, okay, I don't know exactly what this is, but this looks like HTML tag, so I'm going to render it as HTML. So then you don't really need the HTML tag? No, not, not true. You do need the HTML tags. Remember, I, I, I prefix this by saying I skipped a few important tags that you need. Right, and, but, but it shows up as HTML. Yes. Uh, yeah, in this particular example, in this particular context and all that. Browsers will be smart enough typically to figure that out, but you don't want to depend on that. It has the potential not to work in some circumstances without those tags. Now, let's go and add those tags in. All right? Because there's sort of a set of tags that um, exist on every web page all right, that I neglected. Pardon me? <laughs> Dang it. Oh, I well, what I hit? All right, there we go. All right. And I'll put those tags in now. I'll move it around so that you can see it if it's off the screen. So, here's the extra tags that I added. At the beginning, I put this guy in here. This is called a doc type. And what the doc type does is it says specifically what flavor of HTML we're using. In this case, we're using HTML5. And so this doc type tells the browser, hey, this is HTML5. That can help a browser 
figure out the best way to display the page. All right. So that's what that means. This isn't really a tag, all right, and there really isn't a, a uh, corresponding end tag to it. Um, I believe the proper name for this is a declaration or a doc type. So, all right, I then have HTML, and I have this lang equals en, all right. This along with the and HTML at the very bottom of the page relates to the question that the student asked a couple minutes ago. How did the browser know it was an HTML file? Well, with this HTML tag in there, there's no doubt. Hey, this is an HTML document. Specifically, it's an HTML5 document. All right. I then have two subsections within my document, a head, and a body. The body is where the stuff that appears on your page is going to live. So all that code that I put in a couple minutes ago appears in the body section. All right. The head section has information about the page. All right. And we'll find a few things to put in there going forward. Right now, the one thing that we're going to put in there is a title. I'll just make the title photography. I'm delivering it. I'm deliberately making it different than the H1 tag, just so we can see the difference. All right. Notice now on the browser it says photography uh, on the browser tab. That's the title that I've given it. And then digital photography made easy, and so on. Now, a couple things to notice, all right? Notice that for title, for H1, for H2, the star tag's on the same line as the end tag. For the head and body, it's not on the same line. Really doesn't matter to the browser. As long as the start and end tag are, are positioned uh, correctly, doesn't matter if they're on the same line, on different lines. The browser essentially ignores any extra white space. By white space, I mean spaces or returns or anything like that. So I could just as well do this, and it really doesn't matter. It had no impact on it. I could even do this. and it doesn't matter. We'll revisit this more in subsequent classes. That's actually a good thing, believe it or not. It, it seems a little annoying at first, but it actually is good that it works that way. All right, key points from this, the tags, the specific tags that we talked about, the, the H1s um, through H6 and the paragraph tag, and then sort of the tags that appear on every page that, that do the framework. The doc type, the HTML tag, the head tag, and the body tag. Um, the HTML tag had something a little extra in it called an attribute. This indicates that the page is in English. And that, that can help some things um, if you define the language that's used. We'll talk, a little more, we'll talk more about attributes in subsequent classes. So, well, your job is, is to make a page similar to this, but about the three different topics that, three or four, however many I have, topics that I've defined uh, in the assignment. All right. I will save this uh, and post it to Angel so that you can take a look at it and review it. And we'll continue looking at HTML um, next week. Remember, we do not have class Monday, so we'll see you uh, a week from the day. All right. See you up in lab.